If you search for Tami Wimey in the dictionary, you'll find the name River Song. She's an incredibly unique character whose timeline is back to front, side to side, up and down, in and out, even the hawky corky would be confused. She's the daughter of her husband's companion, the wife of her mother's best friend, and a childhood friend of both her parents. Her timeline ran in the opposite direction to the Doctor's, which at times is incredibly confusing, trust me, but fascinating at the same time. Luckily for us, the majority of River's life has been rather well documented. It's just putting it in order, which is the hard bit. So today, from Demon's Run to the library, buckle up, because we're going to try and explore the story of River Song. It all started one night in the TARDIS after Amy and Rory's wedding. Emotions were high as the two went back to their room. And you see, when a boy and a girl really love each other, they like to show their love by certain actions. Certain lovemaking actions. It all started when Amy... And that's how River Song was created. <clears throat> anyway, River was a sought after asset after she'd even been born. Because she was conceived in the time vortex aboard the TARDIS, Madame Kaverian saw River as a weapon which under the right training and in the right environment and circumstances could be used as the perfect weapon to fight against the Doctor, even having the ability to regenerate. Early on, Amy was taken to Demon's Run, being replaced by a flesh avatar aboard the TARDIS. She gave birth to River, or Melody as we'll call her for now, as she was called on Demon's Run. She was given the name Melody after both Amy and Rory's childhood friend, Mel's, which of course turned out to be more far of a coincidence down the line, which we will get to. Kavarian placed a neural block on Melody as a failsafe, which ensured that no matter how hard she tried, Melody could never kill Kavarian. Within a month, Melody was replaced by a flesh avatar and was taken away from her mother. This was so she could be sent away to be trained and moulded into the weapon which Kavarian envisioned her to be. Amy still believed her daughter was real as the Doctor and his friends took over Demon's Run in an attempt to rescue Amy and her child. This was only to discover that Melody was a ganger all along as she was liquefied in her mother's arms. As Melody grew older, she was trained by the Silence to be the perfect assassin for the Doctor. Her upbringing was far from ideal as she was kept isolated in the Nightmare Room on Demon's Run. She was then transferred to the Greystark Orphanage under heavy security, a place where she suffered horrendous nightmares night after night. She was forced into an Apollo astronaut suit which had been upgraded by the Silence. The suit had alien technology, artificial intelligence and moved autonomously. This scared Melody so much so that she decided to make contact with the highest authority at that time, President Richard Nixon. She'd often call Nixon no matter where he was and warned him of the silence, pleading for his help, describing how the spaceman was going to eat her. This caught the attention of the doctor who tracked Melody down alongside her mother Amy. Because Amy had witnessed the astronaut kill the Doctor in the future, she panicked when first seeing the astronaut shooting it with a gun, not knowing that she'd in fact just shot her own daughter. Worried, scared and confused, Melody fled the spacesuit, living homeless in the depths of New York City for the next couple of months. She eventually developed a terminal illness, leading to her first ever regeneration, where she regenerated into the body of a toddler. She somehow found her way back to Ledworth, growing up once again, but this time alongside her eventual parents, Amy and Rory. Due to her troubled upbringing, Melody, or Melz as she was now known, was often very brash and erratic throughout school, often getting into trouble with her reckless and criminal behaviour. She was the only person who knew of the Doctor, with Amy not sharing her imaginary friend with anybody else. 
This led to Mel's growing obsession with Amelia's raggedy doctor claiming that she would marry him one day. She also blamed the doctor for all historical events, condemning him for never intervening. This is believed to have been due to the manufactured hate that was instilled within her by the silence. All she'd known since her birth was that the doctor was bad and that she was the one who had to deal with him. And as Mel's grew older, her misbehaviour persisted. She was always in trouble with the police for stealing cars, buses, among other things too. But she did do some good when she helped Amy and Rory realise their feelings for one another as she helped Amy to come to the realisation that Rory was and had always been in love with Amelia, proving that she was the only girl that he'd ever hung about with. Mel's was the one who brought her parents together. Throughout Amy and Rory's earlier encounters with the Doctor, we never saw Mel's. This was mostly due to Amy and Rory hardly ever being back on present day Earth. We are to believe that Mel's was invited to their wedding, as seen in the Big Bang, but as referenced in Let's Kill Hitler, Mel's didn't do weddings and never attended. When Amy and Rory finally did return home in 2011 for a prolonged period of time after the Doctor had left them behind to rescue Melody in A Good Man Goes to War, Mel's followed her parents as they pursued a message that was left by the Doctor in a cornfield. She finally came face to face with the man that she'd been bred to kill, holding him at gunpoint so she could escape the police. Knowing the Doctor's ability to time travel and from the stories Amy had shared with her, she asked the Doctor to take her back in time to World War II so that she could kill Hitler for the hell of it. The four then crash landed in Hitler's office in 1938, inadvertently saving him from the Tesselector. When Hitler fired back at the Tesselector, the bullet ricocheted around the room striking Mel's in the stomach. Before she regenerated though, she revealed her true identity to the Doctor, Amy and Rory, expressing her happiness that she'd found them. She then exploded with regeneration energy before emerging as the incarnation which we'd later know as River Song. As soon as she regenerated, she immediately switched her attention right back to her primary function, to kill the Doctor. She kissed him with her poisonous lipstick which was laced with Judas tree poison which caused the Doctor to be poisoned past the point of regeneration. Melody left him to die so that she could run amok in Berlin thinking her task was done. Her bloodlust for the Doctor though did begin to wane when her parents lives were at stake. Amy and Rory were in danger of being killed by antibodies aboard the Tesselector and the Doctor was the only one who could save them. Despite River's attempt to murder the Doctor, he allowed her to pilot the TARDIS so she could indeed save both of them, before passing out seemingly dead. When River returned, she reawakened the Doctor by sacrificing a number of regenerations before passing out herself. Following this, the Doctor returned the favour by taking River to be treated in the best hospital in the universe, leaving a TARDIS-shaped diary by her side. A diary which was made to have exactly the right number of pages to reflect the exact number of adventures that the pair would have together. River began to search for the Doctor straight away as she went to the Lunar University in 5123. She wanted to study archaeology and her studies allowed her to discover some of the Doctor's locations, but never enough to find him. While studying, she chose Bernie Summerfield to be her tutor, as she had previous knowledge of the Doctor. She graduated at the top of her class despite being recalled as the most annoying student that Bernice had ever tutored. River eventually earned a doctorate from the university. This was until Kavarian and the Silence returned and had come looking for her. They captured River once more, forcing her into the very same spacesuit which she saw at Lake Silencio. This was so she could await for the Doctor, so she could kill him all over again. River emerged out of the lake as the Doctor came to confront her. He reassured her that all would be well as River raised her arm ready to execute him. This was until she drained the weapons packed, defying a fixed point in time, saving the Doctor's life. This, however, caused a rupture in time, creating a reality where all of history happened at once. Because River was one of the few people who knew of what happened in the correct timeline, she helped capture Madame Kaverian and the Silence. 
After Amy had brought the Doctor to her, the two got married on top of the pyramid as the Doctor shared his plan with River. This plan consisted of the Doctor replacing himself with the Tesselector, allowing River to emerge from Lake Silencio once again, but this time murder him proper. The plan did work, with River shooting the Tesselector, Doctor dead, before walking back into the lake and restoring history back into place. This led the Silence to believe that their job was done. Despite River helping the Doctor restore history, her actions were seen as murder, and she was put on trial for the quote-unquote death of the Doctor. She pled not guilty, claiming that she had to kill him in order to save the universe, but in spite of her protests, she was sentenced to 12,000 consecutive life sentences in the Stormcage Containment Facility. To protect the Doctor from the Silence who believed that he was dead, River served the entirety of her sentence. She did escape various times so she could spend time with the Doctor, which we'll get to, including her very first night imprisonment when the Doctor visited her and took her to the Calderon Beta. This is where he explained to River the purpose of their diaries. Following this, she escaped with the 11th Doctor a numerous number of times. She travelled to the Bourne Meadows with him and was taken out for karaoke in the 48th century with the Doctor and the infamous Jim the Fish. She escaped imprisonment once more after receiving a phone call by the Doctor who was pleading for her help. She travelled back to 2012, helping the Doctor fight off the Cybermen, Daleks, Silence and Silurians. Each villain had a piece of the Eternity Clock, a device of unknown origins which was split into four components. Once placed together, the Eternity Clock would threaten all reality. The pair retrieved all four components from each of the creatures as the four pieces tried to pull themselves together. The Eternity Clock began tracking all fixed points in time, threatening to rewrite River's timeline. The clock and the TARDIS began sinking together, leading to the Doctor and River clinging on as the TARDIS was towed away with them inside. She then returned to Demon's Run, once her former self had been taken, avoiding a potential paradox. The Doctor confronted River on her refusal to turn up and help him, once again asking who she was. River revealed her true identity to the Doctor, which reassured him that she would indeed be okay. The Doctor left in search of Melody, leaving Amy and Rory in distress and confusion. River showed them both a prayer leaf, which was River's name stitched into it. She explained that in the language of the forests, they did not have a word for pond, and that the only water in the forest was the river. As the TARDIS translation began to kick in, it was revealed to Amy and Rory that her daughter would be okay, and that she'd in fact been with them all along. It was revealed that River Song was indeed their daughter. In 5145, River escaped once again, but this time to warn the Doctor of a prophecy which showed the TARDIS exploding. She blackmailed Dorian Maldivore so she could acquire the Vortex Manipulator before stealing Van Gogh's painting of the exploding TARDIS from Liz 10. This contained specific space-time coordinates which River graffitied into a cliff at the dawn of time to ensure that the Doctor would find them. She then travelled to England in 102 AD so she could meet up with the Doctor and Amy. The three then discovered the location of the Pandorica beneath Stonehenge. When River went to fetch the TARDIS, she was sent to Amy's house on the 26th of June in 2010. Once River told the Doctor of the date, he realised that the TARDIS was about to explode as shown in the prophecy. River was trapped in a time loop at the heart of the explosion. The Doctor did eventually rescue River and restore the universe back to normal. This did lead to Amy forgetting about the Doctor completely. This was until River left Amy her diary, allowing Amy to remember the Doctor back into existence. She was asked for her identity by the 11th Doctor, only for River to tease him, revealing that he would find out very soon, and that would be when everything changes.
River then, for a change, was breaking back into prison rather than breaking out. This was after she'd been away with the Doctor for her birthday, ice skating on the Thames in 1814. She returned to find Rory in the Stormcage facility as he begged River to help him get Amy and their baby back. River refused, revealing that this was the day that the Doctor finds out who she really is. She was then caught up in a fight with a Suntaran before being rescued and told off by the Doctor. Because of this, the Doctor returned her back to jail to prevent her from interacting with any of her past or future selves. Once back in jail, River received an invitation from the Doctor, along with Amy and Rory as they travelled to Utah on the 22nd of April 2011. This is when River witnessed her younger self shoot the Tesselected Doctor. She joined the Doctor, Amy and Rory and Canton Delaware III in Florida, 1969, as River revisited her childhood. Here she witnessed her younger self break free of the spacesuit, retaining all knowledge of the little girl and the silence to herself. She helped the Doctor defeat the silence by using their brainwashing of humanity against them. She requested that the Doctor take her back to Stormcage, where the two shared a kiss. This is where River learnt that this was her first kiss to the Doctor, meaning to her it was probably their last. This indicated to River that the day was fast approaching where she would see the Doctor and he wouldn't recognise her at all. River was then placed within Father Octavian's custody. She was sent on a mission beside him in order to earn her pardon. Once reunited with the Doctor and Amy, she assisted them in defeating an army of weeping angels. She refused to reveal to the Doctor why she was in Octavian's custody and who it was that she'd murdered, but she did inform him that they would meet again at the opening of the Pandorica. Following this, she returned home to see her mother after she'd climbed out of the Byzantium. This was shortly after the universe had been restored. Amy was worried that the Doctor had died and that she'd never seen him again. River reassured her mother that he was still indeed very much alive. River then spent the odd night with the Doctor once again on various light-hearted adventures while she was in prison, including a date with the Doctor on Asgard. No, not that one. She also helped him in search for the Queen of England in all the pet shops across London because the Queen had turned into a goldfish. While imprisonment, River Song had a wide array of different adventures with different Doctors. Without listening to every single Big Finish audio in depth, picking up all the small references here and there, it's very difficult to place each individual audio adventure in order. What we do know is following all of these other adventures between River and the other Doctors, she used a device so that his memory of these events was completely wiped. She did this so that she could not corrupt his timeline. But during her time in Stormcage, she had adventures with the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th Doctors, which she documented in her diary. She also had encounters with various different Masters, including the War Master and Missy. She also met Unit and Captain Jack also, but like I said, putting all of these in order seems next to impossible. And even if they could be, I'd praise the hell out of anyone who could document River's adventures within Big Finish across many different series, meeting many different Doctors and Companions. Nevertheless, if we assume that these adventures occurred while she was still in Stormcage, she next met the 11th Doctor in Manhattan in the 20th century, a long time after she'd been pardoned and released from prison. This was because all evidence of the man that she'd murdered had suddenly never existed, due to the Doctor erasing himself from every database in the universe. She was reunited with both of her parents as they were pursued by the Weeping Angels decade by decade. Once Rory had been cornered by the Angels with no way out other than suicide, creating a paradox on top of the key, River witnessed her parents jump from the top of the building, seemingly falling to their deaths. Despite the paradox working, River's parents were taken away regardless, with Rory taken by a surviving Weeping Angel. Amy emotionally chose to leave the Doctor behind so that she could stay with Rory. 
She had the support of River who stood by her side. And she witnessed Amy disappear from the Doctor's life for the final time. Despite the Doctor of course being distraught and asking River to travel with him full time, she knew it could never work with their timelines being in opposite directions and she left the Doctor on his own. While learning that King Hydroflax had the Halassi Andravar diamond embedded in his head, River devised a plan to marry him so that she could retrieve it. She asked her assistant Nardal to surgically remove the diamond, only for Nardal to bring the Twelfth Doctor to her instead. Having never seen this incarnation before, River did not recognise the Doctor at all, despite him continuously trying to tell her who he was. He eventually did reveal his identity, and the two teamed up by defeating Hydroflax, with their ship hurtling towards Derillium. After River had regained consciousness, she emerged from the TARDIS to join the Doctor on the balcony in front of the Singing Towers. He gifted her with a new sonic screwdriver, but River remained worried that this would be their final night together. The Doctor accepted that their time must come to an end eventually, choosing to stay with River for that entire night on Derillium, a night which in fact lasted for 24 years. Sometime later in the 51st century, River led a team of archaeologists into the library to investigate what had happened there a hundred years earlier. She contacted the Doctor via his psychic paper, leading to her meeting Donna Norble and the Tenth Doctor, a Doctor who'd never seen River before. She tried to use her diary to find out exactly where she was in the Doctor's timeline, questioning him on events such as the Byzantium and Asgard, before realising that he was a far younger version of the Doctor than she thought, a version who didn't even trust her. The only way that River could prove to the Doctor that she did in know him this well was to whisper his name in his ear. This instantly shocked the Doctor, reassuring him that he could trust her. The Doctor was willing to sacrifice his life to save Donna, but was knocked out by River so that she could take his place. Despite the Doctor's protests, River pleaded with him to not change their history, not a moment of what had or would have come for them. The Doctor tried to question River on how she knew his name, as he would never tell anyone his name and there was only one time that he ever could. River did not reveal this to the Doctor and sacrificed herself as the auto-destruct countdown had stopped. The Doctor realised that his future self must have gifted River the Sonic for a reason, before discovering that it contained a neural relay which held her data ghost. The Doctor saved River in a virtual world within Carl, along with her fellow archaeologists. Following her death, River was pulled into a dream-induced conference call by the Paternoster Gang. She revealed to Vastra the coordinates for the Doctor's tomb, and once on Trenzalore, River stayed in contact with Clara to keep the link open. Once the Great Intelligence began to sabotage the Doctor's time stream, Clara jumped in to try and save him. The Doctor wanted to follow her, but River desperately tried to stop him. She believed that the Doctor couldn't hear her before he caught her hand, revealing he could see her all along, and that he could always see her. The pair shared one final moment before River faded away for the final time, never to see the Doctor again. Now there's no shadow of a doubt that River Song's timeline may be the most confusing and timey-wimey story which we will explore in this entire series. There may be gaps and a few of her audio adventures that may be able to be placed within her timeline more specifically than what I have in this video. Without listening to them all, it's simply impossible to say, but that's a rough, if not 100% perfect story of River Song's life. 
Even though we seem to have an idea of a starting point and an end point to her timeline, it's so flexible and so malleable that she could still meet any doctor and any companion, whether that's 5, 10 or even 15 years down the line. It can simply be placed within any gap which the writers see fit. So I don't think River Song's story is over, or that it will ever be over. But at this point in time, that's a wrap on the story of River Song. I'm now gonna go and lie down. So then guys, thank you for listening to the latest episode of the story of, and by far the toughest to put together so far. But if you've enjoyed this video, do hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for weekly episodes of the story of, where we delve into the life and the timeline of an event, a character, a villain, or anything that is related to the Doctor Who universe. There is a playlist on the channel which contains videos where I've already explored the story of the Master, the Time Warp, Captain Jack Harkness, and now River Song, and I'll be doing many more in the future. Next up, I might be doing units, but I'm going to be putting a post up on our social medias just to make sure. So if you haven't already, you can visit us on our website where you can find links to our Facebook, Twitter, and many other pages across the socials. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to support the channel, you can also do so on Patreon where you receive a link to our Discord server, as well as early access to all uploads, including episodes of The Story Of. But until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of this series. I'll see you in the next one.